Check this out. K office, baby. The tactical art EK9. Air Mira no shisakuhin. We'll see it next month at Scuba. The $100,000 180SX. So race car. Absolute work of art. This is what the market needs. Yo, we made it. Tokyo Auto Salon 2023. Let's get in there and check it out. There'll be separate videos coming for the new Z and then the GR86 as well. I'm just gonna separate those because there's gonna be a lot. Check those out on the channel. But yeah, this is the main recap video. Let's get into it. At the Valino booth. Valino is going really big this year with Naoki. Supporting his European adventure as he does Drift Masters. So yeah, they're right next to Sayaka's D1 lights car. Yeah, Naoki's S15 looking good as always. Her car is no slouch. I believe it's a VE head, sequential and all that. Definitely a bigger turnout this year. And right into some attack goodness. Also on Valinos. Got the shoebox on there, shoebox ink, shout out. If you want attack coverage, check him out. And Naoki S15 number two, this one is I believe more of his demo S15. Man, he's got a few, but I think the one over in the Valino booth is going to Europe. And this one they just prepped for the you own know, in-style booth. Definitely cool to see Naoki merchandising and kind of using his name a little bit more. I think Valino's really helping with that, but you know, the dude has a following, a platform. He has definitely earned the platform, so it's cool to see him actually getting out there. And this is their new new coilovers as well. They're just introducing the in-style coilovers. A good gun in style wheel, good gun seats. Pink style. Infamous B knuckle. BN Sports teased having two new cars at the show, and I did not expect an S2000 or I guess an A90 Supra. The A90 maybe makes sense, but I thought there'd be a GR86 here for sure, and maybe a new Z. But kind of applying their traditional BN Type 4 big flare with some super wide body. Cool detail on the canard under skirt. Got a little cutout hook. BM bride seats, simple interior. But yeah, with the market on these cars going to like 20 or $30,000, I just didn't think a BN S2K would be on the docket. Now the A90 for sure, like these things are really coming on. Widey, wide body. Carrying the rivets in the door. The front fender line is also really well done. So with an A90, since the hood is the whole top of the front end, a wide body means a wide hood, and so it carries all the way out there. But yeah, I was really looking to see what they do with an 8.6 or a Z. So maybe next year. Oh, wow, well, there you go. There's the Kaiser right there. Just stalker, stalker zooming him. But yeah, definitely with the borders back open, a much more international flavor this year uh, than last year. So I think the FL5 Spoon Civic Type R is right over here. Oh, and the models are out. There we go, get the shot, dude. All right, at the option booth, we have found it, the Spoon. FL5 Civic Type R. Don't have their own booth, but you know, very appropriate that they're in here with uh, Option. Option always has like the, you know, smattering of cool cars that are relevant. But yeah, saw this at Spoon a month or two ago. Check it out on the channel. We have Jimoto Sun here with Spoon and the FL5. Can tell us a little bit about it. What do you guys みなさんこんにちは。スプーンです。えっと、僕らは今回オートサロンに FL5のタイプ 
あとはあのリクライニングのバケットシートを作ってきましたんでそれを見てもらえると嬉しいですありがとうございます What a legend 地元さんで Spoon Apple 5 Bunch of cool new parts for it. So, there's been a bunch of new tire companies popping up recently. And Shiba Tire or Shibata Tire is one that it, they're really putting it out there this year. The parent company is R31 House, which is Shibata Auto Shop. So, the name comes from that. But this year, they've got the,、uh, what is it, the Infinity and a GR86. You know, really beautiful, beautiful builds. The candy red paint. But this is also the new wheel they're releasing. And some smaller wide guys. Those might be DC2 spec there.、Um, but yeah, they got their own wheels coming out, they got their own tires. Shibata. And their tire with a unique lightning bolt there. So cool to see Tain here as well. It, like, You young guys don't know, but like, this was the option. Tane was like the only coilovers available when、uh, I got into these cars.、Uh, and you know, they're just made in Japan, really quality stuff. But since over the years, you know, different、uh, companies have come about. But yeah, Tane is still here. I feel like the daily driver type cars are their bread and butter, but they definitely do make performance dampers, super drifts, and the old Tane HEs were. Where, where, where it was. There we go. We'll settle for a little stock review. Max Arito himself, the 130R Redox booth. He's doing a lot of social media, YouTube, and stuff like that.、Uh, definitely has cool stuff going on. And there you go. Max Arito can pull the crowd about as big as a group of models. So, here at the Garage Marine booth, this is one build that I caught on YouTube, Japanese YouTube, and it was labeled and touted as and kind of Hyped as the $100,000 180SX.、Uh, basically, can, there's a guy, maybe a gamer or whatever, he's got a YouTube channel as well. I can link it below, but he said, I want to build like the ultimate 180SX with just the most high end, ridiculous parts you can throw at it. Mainly just trying to spend a lot of money, I think, but <laughs> that's a brand new you know, SR that's been sitting in the owner of Garage Marine stock for a long time. This new core support was added. But, like, you know, it says Neo Classic on the、um, placard here because it's just like a super resto mod. Like, if you were gonna keep, you know, OEM fenders front and rear, but the interior still gutted,、uh, Bayside Blue, Koki Tails, all the good bits, and then add, you know, stuff from there. Boston Wheels from America that they said were like $7,000. <laughs> and then the GP Sports brake kit. Clean dash, door cards refitted or redone. I don't know about that steering wheel, but you know, not my car. And yeah, painted inside and out, base side blue. So just like over the top, it's got full D Max suspension. I think Super Street coilovers, but yeah, D Max supported. I think supported the build, but yeah, full arms and everything. D Max Eki Manny there. So yeah, just everything new that they could throw at it, they did to make a, you know, kind of like ultimate. Resto Mod 180. So, this is just an example, it says right now, but man, if anybody knows me and my history, I have、uh, experience with FRP S15 dashboards. <laughs> That brings back some trauma. And another big S15 in the booth. Holy FRP smoothed out dash look with the 2J. You see, their style is it's not OEM Resto, it's, it's modded. And the new part that they created for that car was this new core support. So it's all, you know, plate steel that's been CNC bent and cleaner than OEM, but yeah, maintains the OEM look and feel. So you can see the core support in action there on the car. Another vocational school, Tokyo Automobile University, with a couple of like beautifully restored、uh, this one, very OEM Trueno, and this one, more modded Levin. But beautiful A6 is like, how cool is it to see these universities you know, advertising their,、uh, I don't know, their prowess with OEM restoration type builds?、Uh, except Fujiwara Tofu on the side, very appropriate, fogs and all. Any Hummer H2 customers out there that wants an amazingly loud, loud in like the ostentatious meaning of the word? Titanium exhaust. Look at this baby. 
for an H2. Like, that's race car parts. At the Neo Project booth, they brought back another Bellu Mare, Bellus Mare Super Wide Body Z33. Still a super interesting look. This one very gutted, very caged, very race car. Not, a, not sure what they're gonna be doing with it. So as a new owner put on the JDC event we attended last year, Takizawa-san, and he's got his new wheels, his tires as well. So Japan has got a bunch of new small tire makers like buying for position uh, and bringing out, you know, new stuff. Oi, and then there's Hiroshi. Oi, thank you so Okay. So we spin this and then... I don't oh, like no. oh no! I got a white one. So hey, there we go. I miss. Oi, arigato gozaimasu. And if anyone wants a FDJ legal car, it's a 2J, a 2J with a G25, I think maybe a G30 on it. Uh, yeah, it's for sale. Quave sequential transmission, normal rear end, bumps and bruises, but there you go. JZX100 Mark II, drift spec, caged. <laughs> they said it's for sale as well. So there you go. Bride interior, sequential. If you want a pretty mega spec Matsuri car or a Japanese competition car or export, there you go. Hiroshi Ganbate. Hey, just for the novelty, Holtz makes, you know, little touch-up parts for your exterior sold at home center stuff, but Prestone, Prestone in Japan. There you go, making a push. There you go, 78 works. Aftermarket lights, S15 up there, chaser, LED tails, headlights. We have a very important question to ask them. DC2 Type R no headlight to Skuru Yote Arimaska. Uh, no DC2 Type R headlights in the future, at least the immediate future, not in their plans. At the D-Max booth, Yokoi's 2JS15 Monster Turbo. Still really, you know, well, cleanly put together. Reinforcements on the welds on the manifold. Really big Garrett. And the D1, you know, spec D-Max arrow on it, in front of the D-Max booth. And another car here as well, a lights car, another S15, just a much louder green. Oh, there's Sumika Kubokawa, driver for D-Max as well. All right, starting the main hall off in Rotary Corner, and here is a looking FD with looking arrow. I saw this at Seven's Day. It was like a champagne colored FD. Absolutely beautiful, but I had no idea what it was. And one of you lovelies in the comments told me is a looking arrow kit, uh, like full on wide body, lips, skirts, everything. Obviously, immaculate paint job because that is what they do. But for street style OEM plus arrow, I think this is the ticket. I think TCP Magic still is the winner for like circuit spec, but holy cow. Absolutely in love with the, the shapes of this kit on an FD. The monster VSK ups are not a bad touch as well. But just look at the look at the rear fender. Like it's it's all blended and perfect, but that's wide body. This is amazing. There you go. Full kit. There you go. What do we got? Carbon spoiler set. Full body kit. Kyuju Yoma, so $9,400, but with the exchange rate, maybe like $8,500. Really, really cool. Sneaky carbon with the red gloss over it. Next to the looking FD in time attack spec, it looks to be car shop glow. Look at this rear wing with the flap on it. Absolutely beautiful, full carbon. I think this is another Takumi, workshop Takumi uh, hatch and bonnet, <laughs> paper thin. I always point that out, but I laugh every time because it's so rad. Sick, sick car. What's that, RE, I think, front bumper? I might be getting better at my FD arrow, but holy cow, this thing is full on. Really cool, like a wine red root beer paint. Huge, big old single down there. And hey, Linky see you on board. 
Ripping the time or the attack stickers. Maybe we'll see it at Scuba next month. So there we go, just confirmed. We'll see it next month at Scuba. How cool is that? So not only beautiful, but like proper, proper race car. RE with a big booth. I'm going straight to it. Because this RX-8 Aero is amazing. So good. Like, sole reason to buy an RX-8. Not just because they're so cheap right now, but that might be the best potential chassis on the market right now in terms of like quality of chassis for dollar. From this angle, look at that, just beautiful. And I want to get around to the rear of it, but while I can, the new, I guess, reveal of the Pro D1 car. What's really cool is that main, main M, that's a Ma, but that's for Matsumoto, or yeah, Matsumoto Kiyoshi. They just have abbreviated as Matsukiyo. That's like basically a Japanese Walgreens. So it's a chain of drugstores and they're like one of the title sponsors on a drift car. It's like imagine Walgreens stepping up to like Formula D and being like, yeah, we're gonna sponsor you. Um, so yeah, Matsumoto Kiyoshi in D1. I do believe we saw this at Seven States on the channel as well. We got a better look at it. It's just been re-wrapped to show off the new look for the year. But yeah, mega big turbo, I think three or four rotor, crazy, crazy car. But I want to take another, also take another look at the RX-8 here from the rear. Little vents around the rear wheel. I don't know, that front bumper look, so good. Yeah, mega sold on the front and the sides. Maybe do a stock like rear cut bumper or something. I don't know about the vents, but otherwise, man, I love the hood, love the arrow. And this gold really showing off the lines of the arrow, matching the, matching the pro drift car. But like in this gold, you can just see everything is so cool. Look at the rear, like, you know, the fins off the fenders. Nice side shot of it, but holy cow, such a cool color. Plays so well on the arrow. I don't know, FDs, I absolutely love FDs, love FCs, but you know, I think, to buy a rotary car these days, it's just, that RX-8 makes so much sense because it's so cheap and you can put any rotary engine you want in it, which you're probably gonna end up doing anyway to one of these, you know, so. Cheap base, lots of potential, and it looks pretty good. Anniversary racing back with a big four rotor FC. <laughs> Look at that, they didn't contact anyone to get new wheels, they went with period correct VS6s on here, how cool is that? Stock body, just clean. I love FC's rear hatches just being glass like that, but. Yeah, last year's a six rotor Cosmo, four rotor FC. Oh man, I'm having some DC2 uh, flashback trauma vibes here. I could, I could give you guys, I could scrub all this. But I think that's what makes this special. It's like, what's special is like, that is the main thing, not making the car absolutely perfect, like make it functional. Massive header down there, so cool. This is a Chantez, it says. I have no idea what it is, but it says it has an RE Amamiya 13B with a 20G on it. And this car is so small. Completely, you know, trans tunnel fab. Gotta weigh absolutely nothing. Look at the, the wide, this wide body. <laughs> the wheels are completely outside. So that is just nutty. Fujitsuba with a trio here. We got a new Civic Type R next to a new Z. We'll go, you know, they're propped up so you can see the exhaust in the rear. We'll check it out, but kind of a cool look at it. Header flange, primaries, <laughs> exhaust. <laughs> but it's your, it's your car stand. So yeah, underneath the new Z, look at it. So this is the Type R rear spoiler. That's pretty sweet, a rear wing, sorry guys. I saw that one of these was at Honda when I was picking up parts, the customer would order one. And I was like, yo, that's a sick spoiler. I'm like, oh yeah, that's stock. But anyway, Fujitsubo rear muffler, keeping the triple tips on there, all the way straight back from the front there. Just into this one rear resonator and the three tips coming off of it. Maybe two are actuated and one is all the time. And hey, if you like the coverage and want to help a guy out, go ahead and hit the like button. I'd really appreciate it. Now there's stock of shot ton of Gucci's in the HKS booth right now. Again, pulling a crowd. Uh, and I didn't really, really realize what was going on, but yeah. Ton of Gucci there. 
shooting something. I want to see that empty bear shell BNR32 behind him. So this is a BNR32 shell with this is on the valve cover, cam cover, it says complete by HKS, um, advanced heritage. So they, HKS intercooler, beautiful like super, super high-end airbox setup. That's beautiful. HKS twins tucked under there. Oh, and then the delete for the uh, cam sensor, crank angle sensor, cam angle sensor. But it must be part of a program where they have just revamped everything. There's Taniguchi over there, and there is the, one of the, you know, in all carbon, the same thing over there behind him. So that's what they're talking about. But dual plenum intake, look at this absolute work of art. Carbon and aluminum Bosch electric throttle, or yeah, electric throttle body. Holy cow. I just can't get over that, in or that intake setup over there. That is just beautiful. Washer fluid tanks tucked in there next to it. Man, HKS is just on another level. And there's what a uh, bear <laughs> BNR32 looks like. Man, I don't know where this project is going, but it's got, you know, like a new coating on the interior. Still in primer on the exterior. Yeah, the display engine, you got HKS clutch, double or triple it looks to be. That's an old stock plenum. HKS fuel rail, old style fuel rail. Cast outlets, twins tucked in there. OEM manifolds it looks like, maybe ported, but yeah, carbon, all of that, wow. Just incredible. Man, so this is the history portion. That's why I guess we have RBs and uh, BNR32 stuff, but look at the evolution of the super sequential blow off valve to that, the pod, you know, mushroom filters behind it. <laughs> here's, here's the full, you know, computer lineup. Old boost controllers, turbo timers. You got the subcons, full FCON V Pro 4, version 4.0 version 3.4, and that was just the original V-Pro. And that's the one that really took off, and uh, people you know, really used it, but I'm really curious, if they build all the internals for that in-house, like for turbochargers, they just use a Garrett turbocharger and then you know, kind of respec it, rebrand it. For their ECUs, are they repackaging something, or did they develop all that from scratch? Like, I, I don't know, I've, I've never heard anything about that. So yeah, proper heritage. HKS is just like, going big I guess as they do but you know just showing like how much stuff they've been involved with how much stuff they make from scratch from the Zero Yong the drag racing days but yeah a quote-unquote tuning company that can make an F1 engine you know and, and race at that level or build stuff for that level of racing it's just like the highest level of I don't know, aftermarket performance. I don't, I don't know if they get the respect they deserve, but HKS is crazy cool. And they've got an Abarth in the booth. And these, I don't know if they've all got exhaust or what, but these driving around sound absolutely rowdy. Dual exhaust, they make just like the throatiest, burbly back sound uh, that every time one drives by, I'm just like, whoa, 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 whoa. What was that? And it's, you know, every time it's an Abarth. Hey, hey, so if you see that post from HKS, that's what it got me, this cool little HKS keychain. Continuing with the big three, we got Trust over here, and the Hilux, man, these are cool. I don't know what they got going with them, but it's like still like stock intercooler on top, a little suction kit here. So there you go, just got the official word. It's aftermarket piping kit, stock intercooler, so response, you know, really goes up with this versus having the, you know, rubber couplers expand, so there you go trust supporting trucks. All right, we'll get to the cars in a second, but hey, Hilux is cool. Look at this, all these details. This Gretti, you know, just like fashion roll bar. I'm gonna say it's fashion, maybe it's functional, I don't know. These running boards, very like American pipe style. Gretti, <laughs> like, they're going all out with the trucks. Those exhaust tips, they have G's on them, probably Gretti. I don't know, I'm sure the Australian market might be, maybe has these, but I don't know about America. But these, you see more and more of these driving around, which is really cool. Hilux, ah, oh, it's a GR Sport model. I do love the accents on the steering wheel here. You got the whole display here. 
good old wood and carbon wood and your more subtle black leather rb26 intake plenum billet 2j cam covers rb26 billet valve covers there's a good comparison rb26 rods 2j rods rb26 2j you and the guy she tells you not to worry about up garage booth next door to the granny booth is pulling a huge crowd and I overheard some people saying those guys up there talking are YouTubers. Saying a Porsche here from the check shop. I don't know what this is. I'm just kind of enthralled by this brown carbon. Is this some of that like texture, natural carbon? What an accent, look at this. Project Mew, keeping it nostalgic with a Redox JZ80. This could be Burritos car in itself, but holy cow, such a good look. I mean, I admit that I'm not super familiar with the Advan line, but they are putting out some of the best looking aggressive wheels and obviously some cool colors uh, recently. I don't know about those guys, but you know, everything else, pretty on point. And why not, Advan? An A90 on the Oni 2s. Bring the three-piece back. This is gonna be exciting. Motec Japan. <laughs> look at this, look at this real quick. Completely white, nothing going, you know, just, just white. That is enough statement. People know, they see that. Serious business. Car itself, R32. Plain white, gutted. Super means business. We got a PDM back here. Yeah, PDM 30. Power distribution in the back. This chassis is maybe, you know, getting going from here on, but really cool to see it stripped down like this, showing off the Motec goods. Holy cow. Uh, for people who don't know, you look at like $40,000 worth of electronics <laughs> on top of the car itself. Someday we'll be on that Motec level. Yeah, in the engine bay, a beautiful, just crazy spec RB. I'm gonna say it's a 26, but it's probably, uh, yeah, it still says 2.6 liter. Big old turb ski. Nice single. Let's we'll see what we got going on there. Scoot dampers, G3770. Turbo Smart, electronic wastegate, and a Hypertune 6 to 1 manifold. Individual O2 sensors on the runners, like just showing all the capabilities. Individual EGTs. I mean, if you're gonna use the best, you might as well use all of it. I'm totally out of what I normally cover, I know that, but just respect. It's for sale. This is like that etched paint, or etched something. It's been, you know, it's been at Salon every year for years, but holy cow, so much, so much detail on this car. So cool to see something different like this. I don't know if it's, I don't think it's a wrap, but I could be wrong. So there you go, technique is engraving. That's what we just looked at. And it's showing that is the process. And then looking at, I guess, there's the product and you lay it out and you can engrave that? That's wild. So new FL5 in the Varus booth as well. Looks like we got a front lip. Maybe, I don't know if there's a wide fenders or not because these come with, <laughs> these come with wide fenders. I just don't know how much time they've had to actually produce parts for this chassis. Looks like a different swing, or maybe they just created a new top to the stock risers, or just reuses the stock location. That's what I'm saying, some of this stuff is becoming so subtle, and the, and the OEM is becoming so aggressive, and with angles and lines, it's hard to, you know, differentiate the two sometimes, but that is a cool profile there. Yo, Dave, PT, where are you guys at? Here's your Evo wagon again, Varus. This is Solid and Joker. So this one, yeah, Solid and Joker aero line from Varus, but it definitely has the width to it. But yeah, I mean, for a chassis to create a full aero kit for, there's not many wagons. Like, you rarely see these driving around. So to choose that as a chassis to say, you know what, we're gonna create a very unique aero wide body system for it. 
Like, that's a statement. Like, I just saw one of these driving around the other day, and you just don't see them that much, so. Yeah, I don't know, a spoiler too, for the wing on it? It says Kamikaze Street version. Varus wide body aero system for the GR Yaris is really cool. This, I think, is used on the Revolution GR Yaris at uh, for Time Attack, Scuba. Um, another rowdy car, but this looks, you know, more street going version. But look at, I mean, just so cool. Yeah, quite the lineup from Varus this year. Good job. Well done. So last year they had, I believe it's that R34 with the GR6 R35 GTR transmission mounted in the rear, the transaxle. So now they have this complete cutaway, RB26 up front, this whole like dolly system to display everything, and then in the back. So just had a chat with one of the staff from Cruich. You get paddle shift out of the deal, it helps your weight balance, and you know, of course it can hold a bunch of power. So if you want to paddle shift and you know, have a circuit driven fast, not drag, I guess, you, you could drag it, I guess, but you know, he was you know, saying more in circuit use, you get better balance, you get paddle shifting, and it'll hold some power, so there you go. A new A90 super build, H HGK wide body. This I believe is from Okuno Toru. That could be his name, Okuno Factory. He made the Audi, the crazy Audi uh, V8 machine, drift machine, leveling up on that. Twin Garrett's in there. Just, man. Turbo LS. Never seemed to have much success, but that's a beautiful setup. I just want to poke the, I just want to poke the HK, HK wide body because yeah, that's all you ever see people do is showing how flexible it is, but what an aggressive looking car. Nagao Techno. Very cool to see R154, RB25, SR20. So you have a cross mission strength and gear set for the SR20, R RB25, a close ratio, and our R154. So, you know, bringing some support back to these old cars. If you have an old case, you need to rebuild it with some stronger <laughs> straight cut gears. Well, Japan loves a mashup here. It is a four door Hilux with the classic Hilux front. It's like a full kit. I I don't know about this one. It's really round and like all of a sudden square. But you know, there you go. You can front swap to make your new truck look retro. Here's an exciting one from HPI, maker of kind of aftermarket bits and bobs. Not normally full turbo kits like this. Normally it's intercoolers, oil coolers, you know, safety equipment. Um, kind of like a whole bunch of, you know, clear covers if you've seen those. I haven't seen one on a boxer before, but yeah, normally like RB uh, clear covers, stuff like that. But yeah, they got a full turbo kit. I wonder kind of what they're using as a base. Garrett Turbo GCG wastegate. So interesting uh, setup, kind of cool. There's a new, you know, for your FA20, there's a new turbo kit on the market. Because these cars are, they're just, they're going to be the next chassis. Like there's so many of them driving around. Uh, and they look freaking cool. Like, <laughs> I'm all about it. I do want one. If you appreciate the videos and want to get something for yourself, uh, you can reach out to me at nerdgold.jp for parts and uh, Japan buying, stuff like that. Support the channel, support your build. Yeah, shoot me a message, nerdgold.jp. Look at Cusco out here with this 22B. Cool to see them going retro for their display. Of course, sporting Cusco goods, coilovers, and tower bar. Factory race car, so cool. Cusco with another Panam Z. The new, these might be the new RPF ones, RPF 1Rs or something like that. Next to a very rally spec, look at these tires. Rally spec GR86. It's got some there's a P of light bars on the front. And it's not on jack stands. It's high. I finally found it the Tactical Art EK9. This engine bay is amazing. Coil on plug conversion. So some sort of, I don't know, cover, delete. ITBs, carbon funnels on the ITBs. Man, header. Just bare minimum. ITVs really clean up the bay, don't they? Holy cow. 
repainted like Nardo gray, race car gray in the engine bay. FCS, a breather tank. Looking forward to get around the side of it, but it's pulling a crowd. Like this is the, the only Golden Arrow Honda that I've seen so far. Endless brakes with Volk Racing T37 Sagas, Toyota cam gears, Toyota ITVs. Just super tidy, look at that. Even the starter's like so fresh. Samco hoses, fresh, fresh overflow tank. Glorious. Yo, this thing's beautiful. How good is that root? I don't know, like red root beer, brown paint. Lots of detail. Oh man, the <laughs> Sard external collector surge tank. Fuel pressure regulators down there. Gusseted cage. Jeez Louise, this thing's sick. Carbon delete in the center climate control area. Look at that. It'll relocate for the mirror. Bride and Pro Drive harnesses. You know, more impressive is it's a weld in cage. It's not a bolt in cage, which is, you know, the go to in Japan. You know, saying goals is so cliche, but having a car, it cleans up and looks so functional like this. Look at the little vents up front. So yeah, thanks a little ball Zach for pointing this on, putting this on my radar. At Eurus now with their GT86 in traditional Eurus aero. This marks you know, the new era of GT86s. If Eurus is producing you know, affordable aero, you know, quote unquote, sploder aero, like it's gonna get wrecked on the track. If they're, if they're pushing it as a new option, then companies like that adopting it are really gonna move the needle on these cars becoming the next, you know, drift chassis. I do think it's a very, like, I don't know, awkward shape to apply this sort of arrow to. The kind of like short rear and the, you know, super wrapped around shape kind of just makes for an awkward line front and rear, but I mean, I'm not gonna knock them for trying and for doing it, because this is what this is what the market needs. We gotta, you know, push to the next ones. So there you go, get your GT86, slap on a bolt-on turbo kit, some big arrow, and you got a 2020s drift car. There you go, your goods in hand. This year too, buying some Euros goods for other people. Man, how cool is this? Nomukin, Euros, Nomukin Jr. pulling a crowd, like just showing you how much personality is involved in like a brand. Hey, 326 power, Mitsuru power, bringing out Ultra Groover, which, you know, definitely rocks Mitsuru power stuff. We got the Zinke, got the S14.5. But I believe this team is based out of Hyogoken, which is like on the other west side of Osaka. They run them this low. <laughs> that's, not, that's not air suspension. They're going drifting as low as they can. So very cool to see some S chassis love here at Auto Salon as well. All right, well I asked Y Square as well, maker of lens kits. No plan to make a DC2 Type R or a you know, JDM headlight lens kit. So I guess we'll just keep hoping for that. GP Sports out here with their 180SX and, oh, maybe some arrow-ish? D1 Lights, it says, no extra stickers. I do like that. Wide body. That's pretty cool. It's a lip on the front bumper. And really quite wide, following kind of like their uh, 180SX arrow package. I get some width out of it. Pretty cool. And more Subarus. More two, more, more 22 Bs, they're just two doors. And the car of the show. In the Kazama booth, check this out. K-Office, baby. They're bringing them back. He literally said 2023, they're bringing back K-Office coilovers. And you know, if you're old like me, then you know, like everyone was trying to get K-Office coilovers in the early 2000s, because that was like one of the best sets. That's sick. K-Office is coming back, baby. Gotta admit, I fangirled a little bit. Of course, 
Kazama-san's here, but Ken Gushi's here as well. And like, I've been following him in Formula D since he started Formula D, since Formula D started. So it's cool to talk to him for a few minutes, kind of get the scoop on the car. So I'll kind of run through that. Yeah, so Ken Gushi was driving this car last year in FDJ. And then they just built this new car for him for next year. And it's going to be 2J power, he said, versus this one is VR38. The VR38 is, you know, really robust, powerful as well. He just said the base engine is so expensive, it's hard to, you know, keep it sustainable for a, a, pro a program. But how good does that car look? Holy cow. Jeez Louise. Maybe they can just carbon the whole door skin and cut out, just cut out little pockets for Lexane. So these, I'm assuming, are just all carbon skins. Jeez. Trying to get this thing as light as possible. An amazing tunnel in the rear. Has a left-hand drive OEM dash as well. So, you know, some parts to make it left-hand drive or the, the car itself came from America. Sneak peek from the future. 2J inside a massive, massive, like G42 or something. This is insane, Tome, complete engine. <laughs> yeah, Mugen, baby. How cool is that for like a little logo mascot mark? We got it up there, anime fashion. But right behind it, we have the FL5 Mugen spec. Let's check this, holy cow. Look at the arrow. It's, like, it's just so chunky. That's, they added a bunch of carbon to this thing. But here's what I really want to see. These seats are sick. Can I get one of those for the DC too? Oh man. I just love that, love that emblem on there. The hood is super aggressive, but I just can't, like that, the carbon down below, they added so much profile to the car. I'm gonna get a video of this hood. So cool. A little more shark gills on the front fenders, wide body, just. I mean, this is what I'm saying. You can see how they just like said, yep, we're gonna just add a bunch out there. But. You know, much aggression. It's getting lost, I think. Hopefully it shows up better on video. It is definitely, you know, adding some like low profile to the car. Look at that, Spo or GT wing, spoiler. You guys can get after me in the comments. Moving, beautiful carbon. Super, you know, hung out element. Like, people designing these parts. I know what they're doing, it's so, so cool. Yeah, look at that rear profile now. Some skirt action there. There we go, look at the front bumper. Ah, oh, but you're not gonna like that. It says concept. Come on, give us the goods, Mugen. Look at this thing. All carbon. That is cool. I wanna reach under there and feel like how it's built out on the underside, but I feel that would be inappropriate. Well played. So not drawing the crowd, but here's the Mugen spec Civic Type R, like kind of race trim. Uh, just different side steps on it. Rear spoiler as well, but gives you another look at the car. Adding such a chunky lower lip really kind of changes the whole feel of the car in the front end. Look at this thing. holy cow. Like, such a race car. Just a flat rectangle. The whole underside is just a big rectangle. Man. That is cool. <laughs> Look at that. Everyone just. A circle of respect. Take your pictures at distance. Uh, no, look at it from this side. Man. Good job, Honda. This tunnel. Where are you going, Air? Jeez, it's a ramp. Oh man. At the Vertex booth with Uenasan's new Lexus. <laughs> These new cars, I have no idea what the actual model name is, but. Yeah, just kind of like Kazama Auto bringing in a new Lexus into Pro Drift. This is active back with a couple insane GTRs. R33 and then the, the all-carbon R32 over there, RB30 in it. 
I do love the, the Nardo gray. Clean, just, you know, gritty, nostalgic style engine bay. I don't know much about it besides it's really cool and it sounds pretty good, but yeah, the M's Machines works. Cayman, what is it? It's a Cayman with a 99 something front. Holy moly, let's take a look at it. If you want to know more on this car, check out Shoebox Inc's channel. He seems to have good details on it. But it is a super rad build. Look at this. Proper, proper race car. So, there's open the door of the M's Cayman for me. This is insane. Like, so race car. And I just had a good chat with them. It's all, like, this was an original Cayman, Motomoto Cayman GT3. This is car. Hi. So Wow. So this year they've increased it to a four liter. He said they gained 30 horsepower. We're gonna shoot for a 54 at Scuba next month. Like this thing is ridiculous. I had no idea. I had no idea this car was built from a stock car. Everything on here, they, they built in developing this car. So I thought it was like a, you know, a Porsche GT3 911 type cup car that you could buy as a race car base, but like, this is all they're doing, like their creation. And he said, you know, the reason they went with the Cayman was because it was midship from the factory. So all your weight is forward, helping balance and stuff like that. But Oh my goodness, like this is the kind of like super high-end race car stuff that gets you excited. I'm blocking the model right now. Crazy, crazy. And he said, yeah, the headlights are a swap to, again, like I told him, I was like, I don't know anything about Porsches. It's just a super cool car. Again, shout out Shoebox Inc. Like I kind of got the base information from his YouTube and Instagram, but crazy. I just didn't. I did not understand there was so much into it. So yeah, there you go. M's Machine Works, Porsche Racing Factory, Porsche Racing Factory. Man, someday, someday we're doing some super epic race car stuff like this. You know, it's kind of like under Suzuki, just choosing a chassis and then just crazy, crazy, crazy developing it. The M's on the side is super cool as well. There we go, and then the next door, looking at the sign, it's a 930 GT. Thank you, let me look like you know what it's doing. So they're just so cool. I don't know anything about them. It has a raw welt sticker in the windshield, but another M's machine worked. Proper race car. There you go. Full specs. Yeah, walk, spirit lights, bring the girls out, bring all the photographers out. Is this a Daigo build? I don't know what's going on here, but that is looking really wild. Yeah, I guess if you're gonna spice up an F40, maybe do it like that. I don't hate it. The front end is so, you know, seamless, literally seamless, because I think it's full replacement fenders, but you can't even, you know, can't even tell there's an obvious line. The rears are a little more, you know, apparent, but that is cool. And I think, what's this, is the silhouette kit maybe, or something like that for the FD? Big slant nose front on it. It's just like the straight vertical wide body look to it. So at Liberty Walk, they have a Moon Eyes with, they have a collaboration with Moon Eyes this year. And I was over here, I asked about a couple and they're sold out. But they held the two that I was asking about, so I got them. Again, not for me. Going out, shipping these out, someone just asked me a favor. But yeah, the scale of Liberty Walk just gets bigger every year. The whole row of merchandise, cars on the other side, over there. Kato's on there, it's exciting, but just created a, a mini empire. The GR Corolla here as well, this is cool, and the proportions work out. I feel like it's more proportionally balanced than a Yaris. The Yaris just gets so stubby in the rear so quick. I don't know, you know, think of like an EG6 or something like that, but 
Uh, I feel like the EG6 had, you know, had like a better balance of rear to front, whereas the the Corolla with the four doors, like it really hits the mark in terms of like what a you know what a wagony hatchback should be proportion wise. Like this is like well like the GD GDB Impreza's I think really nailed it too. So it's super cool. I am about that. Yo, this is wild. Is this the actual car? Yeah, it says Hoonatron on it. Man, like, wild timing as well. KB forever, like, crazy. I cannot believe the actual car is here. such like, you know, time proximity to this video being released and then his death, like this is just wild, like, man. She's getting a little like emotional about that, like, that's, that's wild. Like, so silly, but, you know, right before he passed, like, I had just gotten through, like, I watched the, um, this rally documentary that Hoonigan just released, and then, like, you know, I just watched that, I just kind of, I don't know, for whatever reason, a month or so ago, I just kind of went on this, like, kin block, like, let's catch up what he's been on, you know, for the past however many years, and, you know, then, of course, like, uh, not of course, but just, like, he passes after that, like, just the timing was just, I don't really hit home with me, and, like, if that's the actual car, like, oh man, that's just really, really wild. Um, yeah, I mean, you could say a lot about his life and everything he did. Like, he did a crazy amount of stuff, but, like, his daughter's, his daughter's post about him was, like, what really, like, sunk home as a dad. Like, I need to try harder, do more. Like, that's a lot. I think that's the place to wrap this up. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, share. All those things really help grow the channel. Uh, yeah. What a salon. What a way to finish it. Much love. Be well.